across the hockey game. And the guy would say, it's your turn. He'd glance down, make a move, and beat everybody all the time. That's what I've heard. I've also heard that he went over to Nanaimo to a, a tournament where there was about 50 people playing Boris Spassky, you know, the, the world champion at that time. And so all the tables were set up and Boris is doing them all at the same time. And so George was playing away. Spassky comes down to him, it's his turn. And he says, it's your turn. He says, no, I gotta go. He says, what do you mean you gotta go? He says, I gotta catch a bus. I gotta get back to Bowen Island. And he left. <laughs> You know, there's a part of George, you know, and I'm really big on just don't, I'm really, people that know me on the island know this. Don't, are, are there any kids here? Cover your ears. Don't judge a fucking book by its cover. Okay? And there, there are people, there were people that could judge George because he was, now what was it that Donna used to call him? A good friend, Donna. You short, curly haired, Dirty man. <laughs> and as Donna said to me, he started like that. He'd laugh all the time when I said that. <laughs> Speaking of Donna, I can't let it go by there. Here we go. George loved to give women flowers. George never bought a flower in his life. <laughs> Helen at the Beaumont was often the recipient of George's flowers. And he'd often say to me when we were at, at the building center, he said, I have, I could have to take some flowers down to Helen. I said, are you going to go to the general store? He said, no, I know all the gardens. I know where to get flowers. <laughs> well, bless his heart, he stepped over the line one night. You see, there was this wedding at the farm. Yeah. <laughs> and a lot of you know this, when there's this wedding at the farm, Donna's daughter's getting married. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of. So, at, you know, at the farm, um, they don't drink a lot, but they get pretty happy. So it tends to go on late. Okay? And people are slow in the morning. But not George. I think he was resilient. You know, George would just get up and he'd get going around 4 o'clock in the morning. You know, an hour and a half lying down, I can't sleep, let's get up and go. So he gets up and he's walking out of the kitchen. He sees this nice bunch of flowers. Okay? And he oh, that's great, they're for Helen. So he picks up a $500 bridal bouquet. <laughs> and well intentioned, takes them down to the bulwark and gives them to Helen. It wasn't a very popular thing to do when the bride and mum woke up in the morning. But I think you've got to the point where they laugh at it. It's hard. You, did, you didn't mean anything. You didn't mean anything. You're doing a nice thing for everyone. So we're going to... We're going to miss George. But as I said at the beginning, he's all, always going to be amongst us. You know, we're always going to think about him. He was underneath that exterior. He was a warm-hearted, could be the shirt off his back, really intelligent man. It is, it's too bad Bill Good's not here because he listened to Bill Good all the time. We had all these conversations about, you know, philosophical, philosophical political things all the time. He was thinking all the time. Um, he was. Um, Exceptionally right, and I, I know test of two of his IQs. I'm not going to say it, but it's. I think I'm right, but that was way bigger than mine. <laughs> anyway, I think that's just about enough. If there's anything, would the family like to say anything? Roberta, please. opportunity on behalf of um, the Ma'ah family to thank you for your overwhelming support and kindness, you, the outgoing warmth that you've shown to us has really moved us deeply and I'd like to thank you for coming.
and for supporting my brother Joel through the years. Thank you. Anyone else? Once this formal part, this, this, yeah, this is real formal. Okay. Once this part's over, there is. Oh, but Amber didn't see it. I just wanted to say um, I'm going to really miss George, and um, I really love him, and he taught me a lot. And um, he was always very loving and very kind to me, and um, sorry. And um, I remember two days before he passed. Me and my mom and Lon went up to visit him, and he said, you're not dragging me out of here to go to the hospital, Amber. He said, the only way I'm going to go is if you and your mother take your clothes off. <laughs> George will have a loop going of all the photographs. Um, there's the book to sign. And is Jesse Pinner ready? Uh, Jesse Pinner. <laughs> is he? Yeah, Give me a drum roll, Jess. Later on today, later on tonight, Twice the cold one, toast bones on. I know I'm gonna. As George would say, okay guys, that's enough. <laughs> Let's rock. <laughs>